welcome back to another video about a children's trading card game. And as you can see, today is going to be me embarrassing myself very publicly for a very long time. Um, I have no idea how well this is going to hold up. As of the time of this recording, I've been playing for about two weeks. And this is just genuinely going to be my fairly early impressions of how strong I think um, these various decks are, uh, as well as how easy to play. And I think that's what I'm going to be factoring in. Um, I, w I want to, uh, as we go through, I'll kind of discuss... Um, how I feel English players will take to certain decks, and uh, also how strong I feel certain ones are, and how popular I think they'll be. I'll just give my sort of opinions on that. So, I think the best place to start is going to be Zoro, uh, and I think Zoro is um, really good. Uh, I think it's really good. I also think that um, it is going to be insanely popular, um, which uh, leaves me, you know, I, essentially it's either S or A, uh, and I am very tempted to put it in S. I am. Um, but I think that uh, S I want to reserve for like the absolute best decks, and I don't think Zoro is an absolute best deck. Uh, and I also think that there are plenty of um, ways to counter Zoro, uh, especially as purple becomes more popular. Uh, and you know, sort of as a result, uh, I can't really justify putting it there. But I think it's going to be insanely popular, and the deck is very easy to play. Like fundamentally, it's it's just an aggressive deck. Um, it's not that easy to play. Uh, I, you know, you can't. You can't like no brain it, but like it requires fairly minimal brain cells to do reasonably well with. So uh, that's why I'm going to put it in a. I think like it's um, it, especially once the list is kind of solved, um, which it seems to be getting towards. Uh, yeah, I think the second is really really good. St. I'm going to have to put law, um, and the reason I'm putting law here, it's not necessarily because it's like overwhelmingly stronger than anything else. Um, it's just that it can do a hell of a lot. Um, it's very annoying to play against. And it gains access to some of the absolute best um, tools in, available in the game, uh, right? Like you have access to Kid, you have access to loads of one-cost blockers, you have access to the Otama Jet Pistol package. Like Jet Pistol in general is just like one of the most premier forms of removal, so you have access to that. Um, obviously, the Eight Drop Kid is crazy. Uh, just having access to all these tools, Straw Sword is another really nice one. Like yeah, just the fact that you have access to all this stuff. Um, together, uh, combined with the fact that Law is a leader, which is like, uh, you know, fairly obviously, like, once you have the whole card pool and you look at it, like, yeah, okay, this seems fairly obviously strong with how slow the game is played. So, yeah, I, I'm, I think this is really good, and I think it's going to be really popular as well. Law is a very popular character, um, so I think that's the other consideration, and, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be seeing this deck everywhere. Um, and it's, you know, it's it has the sort of uh, strength to back that up. Uh, I'm going to put Luffy in B tier. And that's just because um, it, it just, you know, fundamentally, like, you know, if, if a leader ability is only going to be used once or twice a game, it has to be really, really, really good, right? Uh, like, Zoro's leader ability is, like, fine, but you use it, like, every turn, so it becomes very strong. Law's leader ability is probably going to only get used, like, three or four times at most throughout the game, but, like, it's such high value that you're totally okay with that. Um, Luffy's is, it, I mean, it truly just feels like a worse version of uh, this version of kids. Uh, I don't know about worse. I guess technically better, right? But, like, I don't know. The the fact that it takes an extra Don just does feel kind of bad. Um, yes, it gives you an extra K. It's just, I don't know. I think as well, uh, something that a lot of us, um, as we were like, and I, I don't know about a lot, I'll certainly speak for myself, something I completely uh, underestimated was just how costly that, that one life less will be, because... It's not just, like, being able to take one less hit. It's also, like, drawing one card less, in a way, right? Because, like, you know, that life goes to your hand. So by having this extra life, you are legitimately, like, getting to plus out of it. So, yeah, I don't know. It's possible I just haven't uh, gone up against any, like, particularly strong variants of this build, but, yeah. Uh, and then Odin. And I'm going to put Odin in A as well. I think Odin's strong. Um, I also just think that uh, people aren't really main decking the counters for it at the moment. Um, or, like, aren't really playing against it properly. Because obviously if you keep attacking Odin going face and you just like decide to ignore the board, you're giving Odin card advantage. And the Odin leader ability does absolutely nothing without card advantage. Um, so I think at the moment I've got it in A, but I feel like, you know, once people figure out how to play against the deck, it should be down in B. I'm going to put it in B for now. Just because I think like once people figure out how to play against the deck, it's not going to be anywhere near as good. But I don't know. This, this this is one that could age very poorly, and I completely acknowledge that, uh, and I'm aware that people are going to just take a screenshot of the entire tier list without this context, but that's fine. I think I'm going to put this in B because I do legitimately think like once people figure out how to play against it, 
the uh, it's gonna get less good. I think this is a good time to talk about the the final green deck. Um, talk about Kid. Uh, as I said repeatedly, um, every time I've spoken about this card, this is probably the best leader ability in a vacuum. You know, like fundamentally, you can, if nothing else, just swing two K twice, twelve uh, K twice. Um, that's big. If your opponent doesn't have blockers, like that might just win you the game. If they're at zero life, right, they can maybe block one attack, but they're definitely taking the second. So this is a very powerful card. This hits over literally everything with that double attack, right? So if your opponent slams a kid on you, you don't care because you can just go, okay, seven on the kid, swing into it. Okay, seven on the kid, like swing into it again, right? Like you can clear these big things. It's a versatile leader ability. Uh, additionally, green has a lot of very nice options, but unfortunately, green also like is lacking in options, and you really need to build around like the lack of removal uh, green has by playing these ways to just deal with board. Because in this game, board is like so important. Um, and if your and if your opponent wins board, they probably win the game. So uh, thankfully, green does have the tools. You know, it has like straw sword, it has Hawkins, it has these options to like actually deal with stuff. Um, it has the uh, I think it's an X Drake that uh, pops a four drop. It's like it, it it has it has options. So you do like people now that they've started making this deck has become a lot better. And I think these are options that you can't really play in the Odin deck, which is why I'm less um, hot on this than I am on uh, this kit. I think this is a, a really solid deck. Okay, let's next talk about uh, let's talk about uh, this Luffy. I think this Luffy's fine. Um, I'm just going to put it here and B. I think it's just. I think it's worse than Zoro. Uh, I think, you know, the deck will fundamentally be doing a lot of the same things. You'll be playing more Don Juan cards, but, like, it's, you know, I mean, fundamentally, Zoro can also play the one-drop Nami that, like, lets you assign Dons, so it's not really doing anything crazy. So, yeah, I don't know. I just think, like, this is doing less than Zoro is, and so you basically always want to be playing Zoro. Uh, King, I'm going to go ahead and put in C, um, because this deck just does nothing. Like, okay, yeah, sure, your opponents lose, like, 1k. That is annoying, but, like, you know... <laughs> You're also Don minusing a lot of the time, uh, and if you don't go back up to 10 like immediately, um, then you might be in trouble, which means that his own ability is only activating for a couple turns near the end of the game, and like, I don't know, I just, I, I'm just not convinced that that's good enough. Um, yeah, I just, don't, I just don't think it's super strong. Uh, while we're on purple, let's go ahead and talk about Kaido. I think Kaido is a very solid A tier. I'm not sure where to put this uh, Kaido in A tier. Um, I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to put it in the middle, uh, because, like, it's, you know, it's it's good, right? Like, fundamentally, it's good. Like, having that extra life is obviously very nice. You have lots of ways of ramping. Uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I'm going to put it at the bottom of A. I, I'm putting it at the bottom of A, and I'm, I think my A tier is going to be pretty stacked. But, like, yeah, I mean, this deck is fundamentally good. Like, um, you know, you it, it has so many ways of ramping now, and it has tools to deal with pretty much everything. Uh, I forgot one I forgot to mention uh, for dealing with the 8-drop kid is the Queen. Uh, the main set queen, which gives it minus 2k, and then it's a rusher, so like that's going to absolutely deal with it. You have like, yeah, lots of ways to recover from your uh, Don minus effects, but you know, I can't really talk about this Kaido without talking about this Kaido, and I think it's just better. I think Blurple Kaido is just better, um, because like getting access to some of these blue tools is so nice, but like more than the tools, it's just the leader effect. Like, being able to ramp that fast is crazy. And what this lets you do is it lets you like go Don minus four in one turn and be back up to ten. And the fact that you're able to just use those abilities and not really care um, is pretty insane. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a really really powerful leader. I think I truly do think it's just a strictly better version of this. Um, like yes, you do get one less life, but like I, and yes, you you may well use this leader ability. Like I think it's a decent leader ability uh, in the context of the set. I think you ramp fast enough for it to be you know, reasonable. But I don't know. I just think this is way better. Um, now on to blue, uh, far more blue. Okay, so right, let's start off with because okay, so here's here's my trouble. I'm I don't I truly don't really know how to rate these decks because um, they're all good. I just don't know how good, uh, and I feel like whichever way I go on this, I'm gonna look like a bit of a mug. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Doffy here. Uh, I'm gonna put Doffy in A tier, and I do and I do think it's um, it's really good. Like I do think it's really good. The problem I see with it is just like, I don't know, like, later on in the game, the leader effect isn't super good, and it doesn't really have any crazy defensive options, um, and you can, like, and, and, you know, you do struggle with, like, the typical blue issues of, like, dealing with big things. <sighs> I don't know. I think, like, the reason I'm going to put Croc in S tier, or, I don't yeah, I'm going to put, I'm going to put blue Croc in S tier, is because, like, I think, you know, for everything Doffy does with its, like, plussing, this Croc... Like, first you get access to some Baroque work stuff. Um, you don't want to play all of it, but, like, Missile Sunday is amazing. Um, and that's a card that, like, you're going to want to be playing. But on top of that, like, 
the fact that this will just remove pretty much every blocker in the game, with the exception of like seven drop kid um, and eight drop kid, is insane, right? Like this means that your opponent's never safe. Um, and then you also like get like like blue is just very very strong. It's just like it truly does struggle with the green matchup, and that's like the biggest issue, right? With these green decks being very popular at the moment. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You know what? Okay, I I I don't think I can justify it. I don't think I can justify it. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it in a. I'm gonna put it like this. Um, yeah, because I don't think I can justify putting it in S. Okay, the final deck here is Blurple Croc, and I t honestly, guys, I have no idea. I have no idea what to do with this um, because the deck is it continually threatens to be broken, um, but then it's like I don't know. Like so far, the way I, the way I've found like I've I've been playing it, and um, I know other people have been playing it. Is like, it's a really slow deck. It's a really slow grind deck. Um, where you just need to... Like, I think it's good. I think it's really good. I'm going to put it in S, and uh, that's probably going to age really poorly, um, because it has seen, like, zero tops. Like, absolutely zero tops. Like, no one is winning with this thing. But I really do think it's good. And uh, I just I just think that people haven't figured out how to properly pl play with it yet. Like, I don't know. This is all my personal testing, basically, this is, like, for Blurple Croc, because I haven't seen anyone else really doing super well with it, besides, like, Cross. And, um, you know, from our testing, it seems pretty good, but, like, no one else has really replicated it, so I don't know if we just suck or if people are missing a trick. I'm going to lean on the we just suck, but I'm going to put an S tier anyway, because, um, if nothing else, that's going to be really, really funny in, like, four months when the game drops in English, because, like, uh, everyone's going to look at this and be like, this guy thought Blurple Croc was S tier. Um, and I'm going to reply, like, look, I think this discard grindy tech is not bad. Um, but there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. How bad is this tier list? I genuinely do want to hear your thoughts. Uh, let me know what decks you've been testing that have been pretty broken. Drop your deck list, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.